Make some noise! Say the Doctor Strange movie about to make everyone in the Hollywood about to be an MCU character. You know, I don't have a problem with that. I always think about that. Like, remember how Brad Pitt was in Deadpool? But he was like the invisible guy and you didn't even know it was him until he got shocked and died. I mean, but yeah, I actually do like when Marvel does it. The fact that they have like every, I would love for them to have every big name actor have a role in a Marvel movie. Because I feel like they're so strong of actors that like even if they had two, three, five, seven, eight minutes, alone, whatever the case may be, that it would still deliver and ultimately add to the movie going experience. Did I watch any of you of the um, Marvel Assemble stuff for the Disney Plus shows? Nah, actually, Ringe, I've been meaning to go back and watch that stuff. The only reason I haven't is uh, is because I'm watching so much right now that I feel like I can always go back and watch that stuff and I won't really miss anything. But who knows? Also, I was actually listening to uh, Kevin Feige. Apparently, Kevin Feige said something about how the Illuminati, like the MCU Illuminati, um, it's, these are more variant versions. I don't know if, if that's 100% true because I felt like I read it either really late at night and I could have been asleep, so I might have, you know, minced some of the details, but the what they're hinting at is that this is more of a variant version. Not, And I was actually, that's actually not like a spoiler thing because in all honesty, it, there's no way it could be the actual, you know, Illuminati because of when and where it takes place. You, you know what I'm saying? Like, the fact that they're giving it to us in Doctor Strange is kind of indicative of the in the multiverse of madness. I'm just interested to see if they're actually going to use Josh Brolin as two characters. That's what I want to see. I want to see if they actually use Josh Brolin as both Thanos and Cable. I mean, but who knows with this whole variant thing, you know? But they got a lot of the the Avengers Assemble thing, um, the Marvel Assemble stuff on Disney+. Plus. They do it for like every one of the shows that they released on there, if I'm not mistaken. Maybe not What If, but I'm not sure. I'm not even sure if they made one for What If. So I feel like they have it for all the other ones, though. Also, man, they have Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. is on Disney+, Plus now. Like, I'm, and I'm going to tell y'all right now, as cheesy as a bunch of the stuff is, like, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. had some quad... Bro, the Ghost Rider season of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. was f***ing ridiculous. Oh! Nah, straight up, dude. So, look, I'm gonna tell you right now. Nah, real talk, yo, Ringe, I'm gonna tell you right now. The first two or three seasons of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., don't get me wrong, it's some slow spots in there, but, like, if you get attached to the characters, which I feel like they did a, a damn good job doing in those first few seasons, they're hella good. Like, and the only reason I stopped watching them when they came out was because, one, I didn't own a TV. So, I never could, like, watch them on, like, regular television, and I always had to find another way to watch them after the fact. Two, they started coming to Netflix after they were done, maybe, like, three or four months after, maybe later, shorter, but I would end up just binging them on there, and that's how I was keeping track of them. But a lot of the times, man, a lot of the times, the stuff that was happening in the actual MCU coincided with what was happening in Ages of S.H.I.E.L.D. And you also get to see like a bunch of these, not a bunch of characters, but there are characters that kind of with the timeline that may or may, like it's really weird, like because they don't say that Ages of S.H.I.E.L.D. is in the same universe. And uh, some people say it is, and some of the producers say it's not, and whatever the case may be. But there's a lot of stuff that happens in there that coincides with what's happening in the actual MCU around the time they were released. So, and, and they have some really good episodes on top of it. Yo, season one of Jessica Jones was f***ing tight. Season one of Jessica Jones was good. Season two got kind of crazy, but season one was definitely quality. Who was my favorite MCU television uh, villain? It wasn't, it wasn't Hyde. But it's actually a couple of them. And I feel like I'll give away spoilers if I start talking about it now. And, and don't get me wrong. It definitely gets television cheesy at some point. Like, I'm not telling y'all that it's not. And that's one of my big pet peeves about, like, superhero shows. They get, like, too campy. Like, and I'm a, I'm a super fan of campy stuff. But the thing is, the tracksuit mafia. But the thing is, is, like, it's really easy for, like, superhero comic book shows on like regular syndication to get really really cheesy. Cottonmouth? Yo, Cottonmouth was 
Buh. Man, the, I ain't gonna, look, look, look. So, I'm not gonna say the CW shows suck, okay? I'm not gonna say that. I will say that after season two, two season two or three, it gets incredibly bad. Like, every show gets incredibly bad. The villain at the end of Loki? Yeah, that's true. See, I didn't know we were counting... I didn't know we were counting um, the Disney Plus show. So that means that's I really have to think that over. You watch Gotham for one season? Man, that show let me down. Man, that fucking show let me down. Gotham 100% let me down. And people was legit trying to get me to watch that shit still. I was like, nah, man. I'm okay. I'll let you guys watch it. I, I don't want it. That's not the Gotham that I actually wanted to watch.